Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. It's my great pleasure to welcome today's program, Graham Parker, who's VP Digital Freight Solution Sales at Descartes Systems Group. And today we're going to talk about the importance of digital transformation for logistics service providers and carriers. Now, if there's a silver lining to the COVID-19 pandemic, it's that the pandemic has uh, raised the awareness uh, among the general public about the role and importance of supply chain uh, you know, management. It has also underscored the importance of digital transformation, especially for logistics service providers and, and carriers. So why is it so important? Uh, what have been some of the barriers and how do you overcome those barriers? And what is the business case ultimately for digital transformation? Well, those are some of the key questions we're going to address in today's episode. It's great to have Graham uh, with us on the program to share his insights and advice on this topic. So, Graham, welcome to the program. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for having me. Look forward to it and fan of the program. Excellent. So, um, you, you know, before we dive into the, 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 the topic here, uh, you're a first-time guest on Talking Logistics. I'm always curious about how people get involved with this, you know, crazy industry that, that we're in. Um, so, before we dive into digital transformation, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your career path? I mean, how and why did you get involved in supply chain logistics and what's your current role and responsibilities there at Descartes? Sure. Um, so I guess, um, you know, going back to my, my college days, I, I, I did business and uh, I was just, you know, super interested uh, uh, in, in global trade and world trade. And I was fascinated by, uh, you know, how the world was, you know, getting getting smaller, even in the late '90s, um, and you know, looking at uh, how how China was starting to op open up, and uh, I actually dropped out of college and uh, and took a job in in a log logistic company. Uh, my parents were super super stressed uh, and uh, unhappy, and then when I was when I, uh, I was maybe 19, and uh, three years later, at 22, I started my my own freight business. Um, and uh, you know it was uh, it was 2002 or so. Um, you know, container shipping was was really taking off on the Asia Europe trade. Uh, you know, being based in Europe, uh, I, I was able to take advantage of that. So um, I grew the business. In, you know, in the first year, I did a million dollars in sales, and then doubled it every year, up to about 15 million over half a decade. And you know, kind of traveled the world and got to meet. Um, some super interesting logistics folks from, from, from the US and from Asia and from all over the world. Um, and, and, and that was a super interesting experience. Around 2013, I uh, exited the business and I started doing some consulting. And you know, I saw firsthand how technology was changing uh, the lives of, of, of customers, uh, of, of shippers. Um, you know, they were implementing lots of, uh, lots of great SaaS platforms like Salesforce and they would tell me how, you know, they were getting a rapid return on investment and I was still showing up with Excel sheets and things. So I got super interested in, in, in technology um, and I, I had this friend called Charles Lee, um, an incredible technologist. Um, he was part of the team in Cambridge that remapped the human genome. So about a hundred times smarter than me. And uh, we thought this kind of uh, meeting of, of freight and technology, we could form a business and, and, and make a difference. And uh, we founded Containers uh, in, in 2014 uh, in the UK. And, you know, we, we went on a journey of, of, of understanding what was, you know, what was, uh, what was needed in the industry. And we felt that, you know, customer experience was something that was going to get much bigger and software, a lot more software was, was going to be built. So that's where we concentrated. Um, and we, we concentrated on, on some of the big uh, companies. So in 2017, uh, we signed Maersk uh, and built a platform for them called um, Ship.Maersk Line, uh, which was very successful. Uh, we learned a ton. And then we went on to sign you know, uh, lots of other big uh, um, shipping uh, companies and freight forwarders, NVOs, all over the world from Siva to Toll to Zim, uh, lots of big names. And then at the start of the year, uh, you know, we had a good relationship with the folks in Descartes. We thought they were a standout company in, in the group of, of, of well-established uh, uh, freight technology players. They had a, a great story and, 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 and some super people on their team. So we thought coming together made sense. And uh, we, uh, we became part of uh, Descartes in June uh, through that acquisition. Um, and it's been you know, a very interesting uh, period of time. First of all, selling a business in the middle of a pandemic 
Um, always, uh, always interesting. I must have run out of ink in my home office ten times. Um, and you know, when you have the standard stuff of signing in a lawyer's office, but you can't go to a lawyer's office anymore. Um, but it was great to get the deal done. Uh, Descartes were wonderful, and now to be part of a bigger organisation um, and 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 to learn has been really fascinating, and it's really uh, positively uh, helped our business uh, in terms of giving the scale and comfort to some of our really big global customers. Um, so it's been it's been an interesting um, journey over 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 the last uh, twenty years or so. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm sure your, your parents, uh, you know, uh, after their initial. Uh, disappointment, let's say, or frustration, or, or uh, 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 you know, now looking back on it, uh, it, it seems like you made the right decision after all, and and certainly, you know, kind of getting falling in love with global trade and, and logistics at such an early age, and really, you know, going down the entrepreneurial path, you know, pursue it. I think is is a unique story because you know most people, you know, they go into straight into software, let's say, or coding or some B two C type of uh, you know endeavor versus uh, you know the the B two B realm. Um, but, uh, uh, but great, great journey. I mean, you talked about customer experience, uh, there, uh, which is something I, w- I want to talk about too, because I think it is, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, whether it's logistics service providers, manufacturers, retailers, that, that is becoming the, you know, competitive differentiator for, for a lot of companies today is to compete on, on customer experience. Um, and, and really that, that leads me to my next, next question is really digital transformation is, is part of that. Right. And, you know, it's been a hot topic you know, for manufacturers and retailers, uh, you know, over the past few years, but, um, uh, but, but obviously this has a role to play as well for logistics service providers and, and carriers. Um, you know, why, why is it important for them for, for that segment of the market? I think, um, I think Adrian, what we're, what we're seeing right now is the entire supply chain is going through a once in a lifetime digital transformation. If you look across the entire you know, supply chain from the shipper side to the carrier side, um, you know, the freight forwarding side, um, a lot of the big established players have gone so far into uh, down the technology path and the digital transformation path. And um, I think you know, if you look at, at logistics uh, providers and carriers today, um, more, they're running their business more and more on these cloud-based SaaS applications. Um, and I think, you know, the, the, the expectation levels of shippers are, are becoming, um, you know, um, more and more uh, di- uh, digital centric. Um, I was talking earlier about in, in my early career when shippers would come to me and say, you know, I, I've got this great digital application and it's saving me a ton of time and it's giving me this information. Can I get this in in, in uh, in my logistics, and and I think that's really what's uh, what's pushing them. Um, and you know, I think as well, um, you have you know a huge amount of venture capital pouring into this industry over the last half a decade, um, and and that is moving the needle. Um, you know, there are companies; uh, some of them are making an impact, and some of them are not. But I think overall, when, when, when shippers are aware that there's, there's these new capabilities digitally, if they can see that they make a difference, they're, they're keen to implement them. So I think that is pushing um, a lot of the, the big players forward. And, and as well, I think, you know, if you look at a lot of the large companies like Amazon, as an example, who are also kind of looking at the logistics space and they are seeing potential opportunities and, you know, they're growing. So that's putting a lot of pressure um, to kind of expedite the digital transformation process for existing players. Um, And I mean, if you take Amazon as an example, on the Trans-Pacific trade from China to the US, they moved somewhere around 20,000 containers last year. Uh, This year, it's above 60,000. Um, it's just absolutely incredible. Um, and that's just kind of with their own business. And, you know, what happens when they go to the wider market and can, can you know, offer their technology to, to shippers and say, you know, move, move your freight to, through our network and our software. So I think that type of, um, you know, the ecosystem has changed. And I think it's, it's making a lot of the existing players um, accelerate their digital transformation. And to be fair, uh, we're, lucky, we're lucky enough to work with, you know, um, five or six of the top 20. And, uh, you know, to be fair, they're, they're moving incredibly fast. You know, we saw 2018 versus 2019 moving uh, much, much faster than the previous years. And 2019 to 2020 is beyond it again. 
Yeah, you know, you, you know, one of the things that you know folks are talking about, and we, we're seeing it, uh, it is obviously again or, or perhaps another silver lining uh, of, like I mentioned earlier, of, of the co of the pandemic is that you know companies are recognizing across you know manufacturers, retailers, and especially logistics service providers that you know unless they are uh, you know become more digital, um, they won't be able to you know be flexible and agile enough to respond not only to customer requirements but to whatever uncertainties and changes may, uh, you know, are, are on the horizon, right? So in many ways, the pandemic has served as a catalyst for, for digital transformation and, and, you know, and change there. You know, it's interesting, you know, as you were, as you were talking there and gave those examples, um, you know, I, I've often said that, you know, the value proposition for the logistics service providers has almost become flipped. You know, uh, when I started in the industry about, you know, 20 years ago, you know, it used to be, well, what is a logistics service provider? Well, they provide, you know, logistics services, transportation, warehousing, and so forth, and it's enabled by technology. And today, it's almost the opposite. You know, they're almost like technology companies that happen to have logistics services, right? Um, yeah. and, and where technology is really, you know, in some cases taking the, um, you know, the front stage. And, and it's as much about the flow of information and data as it is about the flow of goods. And I think that's become you know, a recognition for a lot, a lot of the industries, because like you said, you know, shippers, the ultimate customers are looking for that data. They're looking that, for that information. They're looking for that integration with their systems to be able to, you know, automate and streamline as much of their supply chain as possible. And they don't want their logistics partners to be kind of the weakest link in that, in their own digital transformation journeys, right? Absolutely agree with you, Adrian. And, and you know, you see it in other industries as well. Uh, here in Europe, uh, Ryanair came out a few years ago and said, we're a, we're a technology company that have an airline license. Um, you know, you hear JP Morgan saying, we're a tech company that have a banking license. And I think you're going to see more and more of that in, in this industry, as you say, because, you know, the, the value proposition and the competitive advantages are going to be more and more digital centric. Yeah, absolutely. So what, you know, uh, you know, we, we talked about kind of, you know, COVID in some ways serving as a catalyst for this, but what have been some of the traditional barriers, you know, to, to digital transformation and, and how, can LSPs and carriers, you know, overcome these barriers? Yeah, I think, you know, again, coming from the uh, industry uh, originally, Adrian, you know, it, you know it's, uh, it's clear that the industry has always had, um, you know, a slower mindset for digital uh, than, than some other industries. Um, and there's lots of uh, relevant reasons for that, um, not least on the logistics side, you know, pressure on margins on a regular basis and even more so now with arbitrage almost, you know, disappearing on the freight forwarding side. Um, and, you know, to come up with uh, budgets for investment in IT has been, uh, has been difficult. Um, and I think that, that, that has been a challenge. And, and I guess, you know, a natural, um, a natural um, result of, of, a, of a lower investment in technology over the last couple of decades is that you have a lot of uh, legacy systems uh, that are that are still operating a lot of the uh, a lot of the big uh, elements of the of the big logistics providers and carriers and you know if you look at moving from um, an existing legacy system to uh, uh, to a, a more modern cloud based system if it's one of your critical applications this is a, a huge event uh, it's a costly event it's a, a multi year event it's it's encompasses every part of your business every office. Um, and I think that's been quite difficult. Um, and I think, you know, as well, if, if I look at, you know, our customers and some of the other big players, I think you're starting to see more pure software people come up, come into the industry. And I think that's quite important as well, because, you know, um, folks from the pure software world have a different mindset. Um, they come at it from a totally different angle, which, which makes sense. Uh, and I think, you know, you're starting to see big forwarders and big carriers having, uh, you know, uh, data scientists uh, uh, employed and more and more in-house engineers. And it's great to see. But, you know, at the end of the day, again, coming from, from the industry, logistics providers and freight forwarders are, you know, problem solvers in the core of their being. Um, it, it's, it's what they do every day. Um, and, you know, we're, we're very uh, confident that, you know, this, this will be the decade where, where it all happens. And I think you're going to see the logistics providers that really grasp digital transformation are really going to flourish 
um, and, and I think they're overcoming those those barriers now um, and, and and really pushing ahead um, you know as you say with with, with COVID it's been uh, you hear in the wider software world people saying you know um, five years has happened in five months um, and that's certainly true in, in, in a lot of pockets of the freight technology sector as well. Yeah, no, a, lot, a lot of great points there. And I see the same thing. I mean, I see a lot of, um, you know, uh, technology people moving into the logistics service provider space. And, and certainly there's a lot going on, not only from a software standpoint, but even those, you know, there, there's a lot of robotics going on into, into uh, uh, the, the logistics service provider world, um, business intelligence, analytics, and, and, and so forth. So, so I think you're right. I mean, I think, and obviously, you know, over the past 20 years, we've seen a lot of, you know, innovation just with, you know, cloud deployments and different pricing models that have effectively made it, you know, much more cost effective for logistics service providers. Because you're right. I mean, it's, it's a low, relatively speaking, it's a low margin business, um, very competitive. And so there's always been, you know, 20 years ago, it was very difficult for a logistics service provider to write a check for $3 million for some kind of an IT project. Um, but they didn't have $3 million to, you know, to spend. If they were going to spend $3 million, they were going to invest it in another truck, another, you know, more people, you know, another office and, and so forth. And they really didn't see the strategic value of, you know, IT. But I think, like you said, whether it's the competitive landscape, you know, new competitors coming into the market that are technology forward or their customers driving them in that direction, IT is certainly becoming much more strategic, um, you, know, for, uh, you know, for this industry. And I think that they're responding um, accordingly. Um, so ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean, uh, you know, obviously you need to have the, the buy-in from the CEO, the CFO, you know, the leaders of any organization to, to invest in any kind of technology. I mean, what, how do you quantify the, the business value of digital transformation for a logistics service provider? I mean, well, what's ultimately the business case for them? Yeah, I think, you know, um, we, we concentrate on, you know, again, it, like, like you said, it, you know, even, even right now where companies are investing um, in, in technology more than they did, trying to understand where do I invest first, where do I buy, where do I get the return on investment, and there's so many uh, products out there today for for logistics service providers, but you know, uh, speaking from from uh, a a Descartes containers point of view, when we think about you know our software, we think about uh, if I think about say a traditional uh, freight forwarder, um, it all comes down to measuring the cost per file, um, every single job that's booked, um, what does that cost me to transact, from the time a customer picks up the phone or sends an email and asks for a price to transacting the shipment, uh, to managing the shipment, to getting it released and delivered. Um, and you could have five or 10 kind of human touch points there, if you will, phone calls, emails, um, and they're really expensive. Um, so, you know, we see with a lot of our bigger customers, they've measured this cost profile almost down to the dollar. Um, and if you say, for example, you know, it costs uh, a freight forwarder $75 to operate a shipment today, um, then, you know, if you look at technology, uh, again, from, from our point of view, you would say, okay, so if we can automate a lot of the elements of this, if the, if the customer can just get access to rates on any internet enabled device, uh, book online, manage their shipments digitally, um, how much can we, how many touch points can we take out? Um, I think it's unreasonable to try and go to zero, but you know, if we can bring those touch points down 50% very quickly, then it's very easy to measure that and say, okay, you know, we can now measure the amount of touch points that are uh, that you started with before the project and now. So let's say, for example, it costs seventy-five dollars uh, to transact a file, and we've 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 brought the touch points down from an average of ten to five. Um, you know, then then it, it, it cuts down maybe thirty-three to fifty percent of the operating cost per file. So you know, we can demonstrate in real-world uh, savings. Um, you know, how much. Um, how much that, that saves and, and that's important to try and uh, quantify that because again there's a lot of newer products where you've got you've got to buy in for the longer term you know machine learning products I think the industry is still a little bit a little bit early for but at the same time you know when you have these platforms up and running and you can prove that uh, that value and that cost saving then you know it just opens up a brand new world for logistics service providers like once you have that digital platform um 
you know, it's, it's like when in, I was, I was going to say the old days, but pre COVID when you go online to book a hotel and someone says, Hey, would you like this rental car? Uh, and it might even say, hi, Adrian, would you like this rental car? Cause you're going to Florida and it's a convertible because it understands the context of what you do. Um, and in the same way, um, you could have a freight forwarder that goes digital um, that is now selling a freight shipment and, and it offers the customer, would you like to tick this box for trade finance? Would you like landside services? Would you like marine insurance? You tick a box and it's added to the total. So I think these are, these are where we spend a lot of time talking to our customers to say, you know, once you go digital on the customer facing side, it opens up a brand new world of revenue streams. Um, and, and that's where the kind of value starts and, and, and can, can really grow to very quickly. You know, I love that because it, what you just described there is it's not only a cost reduction uh, value proposition. I think, you know, the example you gave is very grounded, something that I think any uh, senior executive at, at the logistics service provider can, can understand, right? You know, they, if, you know, if they're running their business effectively, they understand what that cost is and they, and they can see where, you know, if we you reduce it by half the number of touch points and so forth, they can put a dollar figure, you know, on that. But... I think if it's just about cost reduction, you know, that's really kind of taking a very limited view of the opportunities because it's also about, you know, new revenue opportunities or market or the ability to capture more market share, uh, the ability to cross sell different services and, and so forth, as, as you just described. So a lot of these lessons learned from the, from the B2C world, if you will, you know, applying it to this B2B environment, you know, not only from a cost reduction standpoint, but from a sales, a top line revenue standpoint and market share. And then, you know, ultimately customer satisfaction, right? And in terms of providing that enhanced customer experience where, you know, customers are able to self-service, they're able to get answers quickly, they're able to, you know, one-stop shop, if you will, around all, all the things that we talk about, again, on the B2C side, do that in, in a freight, you know, type of environment, which I think would be, a, you know, a holy grail for, for many of the, uh, the shippers out there, right? Absolutely. And, and that's a good point, Adrian, as well. If you look at, you know, again, uh, a lot of the, the, you know, the applications that uh, shippers are using today uh, via freight forwarders and, ca and carriers and logistics providers, there's this blurring of line be lines between consumer software and business software. Like when you log into some of these uh, business SaaS applications, the ones that do really well are simple to use. Um, you know, people just log in and they know how to use them uh, with very little training because they're, they're so simple and help is just to click away at any time. And I think that, you know, that's really important to try and, you know, simplify it uh, because, you know, to try stand out from a logistic service provider, customer experience is now becoming centric and, and digital is, is, is a big part of that. Um, you know, and if you can deliver a digital experience to your customers while saving costs, then like you say, it's a holy grail. It's a true win-win. Right, right. Now, I mean, you probably already touched, you know, you already touched upon it, you know, a little bit, but I mean, is there like a specific example or two that kind of shows the power of, of digital transformation in, in action? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been lucky enough to work with some very interesting kind of brands that and we've, we've seen the digital uh, transformation evolve before our eyes. Um, you know, on the ocean carrier side, you know, one example would be, you know, if you look at ocean carriers over the last 20 years, um, you know, they've been uh, historically, the big ones will lose $2 billion one year, and then they'll make $3 billion the following year. And, you know, the rates are kind of, you know, constantly moving up and down. But if you kind of look at 2019, but especially 2020, um, they've really kind of, you know, understood uh, the market dynamics and understood that, you know, as, uh, as asset owners, uh, there's, there's a lot of control. Um, and we've seen where carriers have become very disciplined in using platforms as the only form to make bookings. Um, and from a customer uh, point of view, you know, they offer incentives uh, like, you know, being able to book a long way in advance, which isn't standard in the industry. Um, and, and in return, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a guarantee of space. And, and I think we've seen uh, that type of discipline where, you know, those carriers in, uh, specifically would literally say, uh, we're not taking bookings over the phone anymore. We're not taking bookings by fax anymore. And in the short term, you know, that might, uh, that might affect their bookings in the, in the weeks and months. Um, and it takes a huge amount of discipline uh, to be able to say, hey, we're losing uh, short-term revenue here. But understanding that actually the customers will, will, uh, will, will, will come. 
um, and now uh, those carriers are now operating, uh, you know, their digital uh, bookings have gone dramatically upwards and their cost to serve has gone down. Um, so, you know, it's almost a, a kind of um, a textbook case study to, to come out in the years ahead. Um, and, you know, on the, on the freight forwarding and the OCC side, you know, again, similar, we've seen where uh, some great stories about where uh, the, the uh, work companies are uh, saving money, but also drastically increasing the customer experience side. Um, and, you know, we've seen some great, uh, you know, great examples too of freight forwarders uh, in regional areas um, using the technology to expand into a new region. So, you know, you might have a, you might have a, say, a freight forwarder in Indian subcontinent who want to expand into Africa. And that might have been super expensive before to put boots on the ground. But now you can just extend your platform from four countries to ten it with the click of a button. So now all of a sudden you're live in a country and you can expand and get an understanding of the market before you have to, uh, you know, heavily invest. And then, of course, you know, uh, these kind of um, additional um, services that we've seen uh, a lot of success with as well, where freight forwarders are understanding that arbitrage is under huge pressure. So, you know, how do I provide value to my customers by providing them digital services, finance, marine insurance, landside services? But there's going to be dozens of these in the years ahead, and they're going to be brand new revenue streams for these freight forwarders. And these are some, you know, superb case studies we've seen over the past few years. Well, those are all, uh, you know, great examples. I think, you know, it, it boils down to change management, right? So it's, it's kind of like moving away from the way we've always done things. And I think, I think something you said kind of triggered it for me. It's, it's not only for the logistics service providers to change the way they've always done things, but it's also for the customers too, right? So if you're a customer that is used to send, you know, communicating via fax or via phone, um, you know, you've got to change the way you communicate and, uh, you know, transact and establish your relationships with logistics service providers too. You know, so it, it takes, you know, it's, it's all parties involved that need to be moving along this digital, you know, transformation, you know, journey. Absolutely, Adrian. And that behavioral change can't be underestimated. Like you say, if I'm on the shipper side and I'm doing, you know, email bookings to carriers every day and I've done it this way, I have to stop. I have to invest some time. So in the short term, it's going to take me hours extra to learn this new system. But over the course of a year, when I get used to that, it's going to save me time every day. It's going to add value to, to, what, to, to the way I'm doing it now. Uh, and you're right. I mean, we've seen, you know, that kind of behavior uh, change, you know, being super difficult in, in all parts. But again, it's really starting to kind of uh, filter through now in the, in the past few years. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we've we've covered a, you know a lot of ground here. So just just as a way to wrap up, then I mean, what what is the first step then that logistics service providers and carriers should take to get started with digital transformation? And you know, how how do you ultimately prioritize where to get started? Yeah, it's a, a great question. I think you know, um, having a kind of a taking a step back and and getting a, a full overview of the business um, and you know, um, getting an understanding of, of, of what the business needs. Because I think if you look today versus say five, 10 years ago, there's so many new products in the market. Um, and sometimes uh, customers can, uh, on the logistic service provider side can feel overwhelmed because you can say, oh, I want to try this machine learning product and I want this chat tool and I want to upgrade my TMS and I want a new customer experience. So trying to understand um, what are the critical applications versus the, the nice to have ones. Um, what's the time to market for these products? If I change my TMS, is it a two-year pro project? Does it make sense to prioritize that over another project that I can get live and increase my customer experience in a number of weeks? Um, and, and I think that's, um, that's really important. Um, and, and as well as that as well, you know, I was mentioning earlier about, you know, uh, data scientists working in freight forwarders and shipping lines and logistic service providers now. And, and part of that as well as saying, hey, do we have the skill sets in the business today to digitally transform? Um, you know, are we all on board with this? Uh, do we need to bring, you know, more, uh, some more uh, digital centric folks in? before we go on this journey. Um, and, and obviously that we're, you know, we are committed uh, to, to the journey once, once we embark on it. Well, great, uh, great advice there. I, I, I you know, completely agree. And I think you know, sometimes you know, when you find these quick wins um, and, and quick uh, you know, business value and benefit, you, know, you can then reinvest those savings, those, those benefits into the next phase or the next you know, project you know, to keep moving you know, along that digital transformation uh, journey. Uh, so, Graham, I, again, uh, you know, we, we've, we've covered a lot of ground here. 
uh, like I always say at the end of all our episodes, you know, we always just manage to scratch the surface, but I think you provide some great insights and, and advice on, on this topic. So uh, again, I want to thank you for, uh, for, for making the time to be with us today. And I got to ask one more question though, over your shoulder there, is that an encyclopedia that I see? It is indeed. Uh, it's, uh, it's been with me for a long time uh, since the time I was mentioning where I, uh, where I dropped, out of, uh, dropped out of college. I've had the Britannicas with me. Um, I have to say I haven't read enough of them. Oh, wow. There's, there's my Britannica. Oh, and I've had them since I, was in, uh, since I was in high school. And they've traveled with oh, me. Wow. <laughs> they've traveled with me everywhere. That so I, I, I can recognize uh, you know, Britannica Encyclopedia. So that it's a... Uh, uh, you know, I think I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go to my grave with them. Uh, you know, they're, they're certainly uh, bring back some great memory. It's, it's an analog world, analog way of learning, but it's still a great way of learning, isn't it? Absolutely. I've had some calls where people have said to me, uh, hey, that's a really nice background, but it's not a background. Those are real. <laughs> Those are real, right, exactly. You know, because you don't, you don't see encyclopedias very often these days. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, true. Graham, again, thank you very much for, for being with us today. Um, if you are watching this episode on demand, either at the Descartes website or on Talking Logistics, and you've got a question or a comment for Grant, uh, you can post it there, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to respond via that medium. Again, thank you for joining us, and look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Talking Logistics. Have a great day. Thanks for having me, Adrian.